But have you ever ha taken a few moments and contemplated what the events and circumstances that you've encountered during the week, how those events fit into God's master plan? Maybe some difficult things. Have you ever thought or asked yourself or God, why did that happen? Things were going good, and, and then I had this difficult thing. Ah. You know, difficult things can be frustrating. And if, but if you fixate and spend too much time trying to figure out or understand where the events that you face every day, if you try to spend too much time figuring out what they mean or why God, you will find yourself like the proverbial deer in the headlights, frozen. The walk of the Christian life, that's what we're going to be talking about, understanding the moment in the context of history. Things come at us so fast. It's almost like you wish you could have a pause button just to be able to process what that was. But God gave us lots of wonderful tools for living our Christian life. But a pause button wasn't one of them. We have to keep on walking, keep on going, because we are on a journey of faith. Hebrews 10, verse 38 says, Now, now, <laughs> the just, and you guys are the just, you who have been washed in the blood of the Lamb, you are okay with God, and you are acceptable to Him. Right now, the just shall live by faith. Now, faith, we know, is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Faith is not something, though it can produce something tangible that you can handle. You actually can't show it to other people except for the way you live. Now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draws back, hits pause and cowers in the corner, God says, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. God expects that the, what he has given you to live your Christian life, he's given you everything we need for life and godliness. And we have resources available to us which give us everything to be able to keep on walking. And when we don't understand something, you can just stop for a moment. You know, Living life is an act of faith. <laughs> but understanding all the different things ugh, reminds you of the old song, we'll understand it better by and by. How many of you know that song? We've got a few old, old timers in here and are proud of it. You know, raise your hand. You should be proud of that. I, I know the song. I understand. I'll understand it better by and by. That's good. In this country, at least in this church, old age or maturity is celebrated. All you young people who see the hands raised, they're the ones you should be talking to when you go through hard times. It also says this in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. For now, again, we're back to the moment. For now, we see through a glass, darkly or dimly, but then face to face. And that's talking about the time that Jason ended up alluding to when he read that scripture, which I had in my notes, but I thought, I have two scriptures I can use. I really want that one. But I felt the Holy Spirit said, take that one out, because it's okay. Use the other one. And thank you for sharing that one, because the Lord knew that you were going to share that. All right? But what Jason alluded to is there's going to come a day when we're going to see Jesus face to face. 
No faith will be necessary at that, at that time. Now I know in part. I understand. But then when we get face to face with Jesus, I shall know even as I am known. That's a wonderful, wonderful thought. You know, right now I'd like a little object lesson. And I want you to be a participant, all right? I take your hand. Everyone who has a hand, lift, lift it up like this, all right? So everybody. I want you to take this hand and put it your, up against your nose, all right? The palm of your hand right against your nose. Okay, now look at your hand. With your, do you, rec do you can you see pretty clearly your hand? No. If, if you're very nearsighted or farsighted, whatever that is, if you can see Clear, that clear. You can put your hand down. Sometimes being too close to something does not allow you to understand what it, or perceive what's happening. And in understanding the events that happen in your life, if they are too close to you, if you're in the middle of it, just like the nose right here, you may not be able to understand or see process how it fits into God's plan what's this if, if you know just raise your hand don't say it okay what this is is you can put your hand down it is a close-up of a needle with thread going through it the eye of a needle do you see that everyone see that now Again, it reinforces the fact that when you're very, very close to something, you may not be able to see it as clearly or under recognize it. And today, uh, I want us to consider, I want you to back up and look at your life in the context of history, not just in today or a week, maybe not even in your lifetime. Do you know that God, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and darkness hovered over the face of the deep. God had a plan when he ended up starting this world. He put a little quotation mark, a parenthesis about one, uh, on one side of time and history, and we're marching through this history. It's his story. But you are connected in this story. And some of the, what God has spoken of in the word, what he intends to do, will only be seen generation to generation. It's a very large, large plan that the person who is walking through it may not even recognize that he's part of the plan. It's sort of like if you were to have a young child stand against a wall and draw a mark and say, this is how tall I am. And then you go out and play and go back and check with a pencil. Did I grow? Well, only if you went like this. The thing is, some events can only be recognized in the context of a larger, backed-away view. Don't get frustrated if you don't understand what an event happens. Keep walking by faith. By faith. 